You heard about stories about pirates going out on escapades to search for buried sunken treasure in the ocean. So there's a lot of truth behind that. So remember, in fairy tales, myths, jokes, stories, and including heresies, sometimes there's a lesson you can learn from it yeah. or an element of truth. All right, we're going to start off with Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, before I use this blue plan, I was going to use it for something, but it's not a smart move to use that one first. So uh, let's see here. I don't have a proper pen for this, so it's going to be very light. It's going to be very light, so let's just use this, all right? You're all going to have to put up with this. <laughs> all right, you want to find buried treasure? You want to be rich? Actually, you Christians do have that chance. Yeah. You do have a chance to find buried treasure. And you're going to be richer than any billionaire. And I really mean that. Amen. All right? So you might go, whoa, Pastor, really? Yeah, I'm going to give you uh, the map, the details, everything on where you're going to find it. All right? You all ready? Yeah, all right, then. You better make time for this. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 28, let us begin. Verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, who is this being? Look at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Verse 15, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till what? Iniquity was found in thee. So you all can guess easily who this is. This is referring to Satan. Now Satan, notice the, the time period was before he fell, right? Verse 15, he was perfect before he was found iniquity. So the passage is describing Satan's perfect state. Now a lot of us are wondering what did Satan do before he fell? Well, look at verse 13. It gives a clue right here. Okay, so let's start off with Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 13. So we saw right here so far that the context is referring to Lucifer. But in his perfect state, we're going to see soon what actually occurred right here. Verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. So he was in Eden. Every precious stone was thy covering. Wow, look at that. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the bell, the ox, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. I like how it ends it with gold. Like that's something really special. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So notice right here that in his creation, he was decked. He was decked with gold and all sorts of jewelry and treasure right here but he was where where was the location where was satan in eden satan was in eden wait pastor are you saying that there is gold in that area look at genesis chapter 2 genesis chapter 2 <coughs> look what the bible says right here at verse 10, Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it parted and became into four heads. Now notice what was located near Eden. Verse 11, the name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Gold. Verse 12, and the gold of that land is good. There is bdellium and the what? onyx stone see treasures so notice that in this location where Edom was nearby surrounding Eden there was jewelry now think about this uh, Pember who wrote a very interesting book about Earth's earliest ages during the classical periods the classical periods where Christians were really digging into the Bible Schofield came out with his reference Bible Larkin started to draw charts of dispensationalism and Pember started to uh, analyze the Genesis gap and the, the early parts of the sons of God at the book of Genesis. But Pember had an interesting theory. So I say this is a theory. I don't teach it as a doctrine. The theory is that Eden, instead of having, 
being covered with trees, vegetation, and beautiful plant life, it was actually covered with gold, treasure, and jewels. So that's what Pember taught. So right there, he was saying instead of uh, plant life and et cetera, there was like gold and jewelry everywhere. Now think about this. Wouldn't that make sense? Because heaven, what's it covered with? Uh huh. You're thinking. So why wouldn't Satan's kingdom be similar like that? Here's another thing right here is that, well, then uh, why is it not like that splendid before? Shouldn't it retain itself? That's right. You're using your head. This proves there must be a Genesis gap because there is a change. Obviously, Eden is not like that. And obviously, Satan is not ruling there anymore. There was a kingdom before this, Satan's kingdom before Adam. First of all, look at verse 8. Look how it's worded. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now look, when he created the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve, notice Eden was as if it was already there at verse 8. Yep. Look at that. Mm. Now, yeah. use your head, who was in Eden mm -hmm. before? Satan, before Adam. Mm. Look at that, scripture with scripture. Mm. Scripture with scripture shows amazing things that you never thought of before. Yeah. And it'll probably make you pay more attention to your Bible reading, right? Rather than falling asleep and say, oh, I already know, I already know. Uh, no, you don't know. You don't know, okay? Read the verse again. So notice right here that Eden, as if it was already there, and you'll notice that there is much gold and treasure. Now, here's another thing right here. Look. At Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, verse 1, right? The beginning, he did that. Satan, he ruled in Eden. But look, verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. It's not perfect. It's not beautiful. It's not Eden. It's dark. It's chaotic. It's empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. There's water and darkness, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What happened right here? He drowned out the whole world. He drowned out the whole universe. There was a universal flood. A universal flood that drowned out this whole earth and Eden where Satan was at. And hence, that is where you find buried, sunken treasure at the bottom of the the sea. How about that? And not only that, the jewelry and the gold is even more shiny. It's even more bright when it's put in that way. Now think about this. This was all buried under the sea. And then what did God do? He recreated all of, he recreated all of creation again. And what did he offer? What did he offer to you and I? Hmm. Here's another thing. Before we co cover what he offered to you and I, let's cover some important things here. That way you can see why Satan doesn't want this teaching to go live and doesn't want people to watch. Let's first look at 2 Corinthians 11. Satan fell, correct? So thus he lost that golden state. He lost his jewelry. He lost his glory. So all he can do now is 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. What happened to him? All that light that he had from all those jewelries, all that glory is now fallen. So all he can do now is produce something fake. That's right. All he can do is do an imitation of it or something close to the gold of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is what? Transformed into an angel of light. See, all he can do now is imitate it. He can imitate the light. <coughs> Isn't it very interesting? That's why. Why is it that throughout history, many kings had an infatuation with gold and treasure, many pagan kings? Why they fight wars for it? Why did the person who was responsible for starting a major organization of current elites today through the round table 
Cecil Rhodes, who's a founder, why did he have an infatuation with diamond mines? Why did he own that? That's the birthplace of all kinds of conspiracies. Why is it that a lot of Jewish elites want to control the banking system? Why do they want to take the gold instead for the currency for themselves? Why is it that the government, now it is controlled by Satan himself, why is it now that they're giving you green paper money and the gold standard has been dropping and now they're hoarding all the gold to themselves? Why would they do that? Why is it the Vatican, the mother of yeah, harlots and abomination, Mystery Babylon? Why does the Roman Catholic Church contain Vatican billions with its gold as well? Why do they want to retain their lavish buildings and their treasures, keep the gold display and design? Why is it that a lot of robbers and uh, grave robbers, etc., why do they want to go to the pyramids of Egypt and think of an Indiana Jones expedition where they can find treasure? Where, where's all this coming from? See, where's all this coming from? Satan is a god of this world. What did he say to Jesus at Luke 4? All these kingdoms will I give you and the glory of it if you will bow down and worship me. Satan wants to keep all the gold for himself, you got to understand. That's him. Whereas he wants people to be stuck in a cheap, mechanical, robotic system. Where that's how you're going to get your, ec uh, econo uh, your economy's worth, is through electronics. That's what's going on in some Asian countries right now. It's that the currency now is going through an electronic system. Uh, they had all this thing coming out, cryptocurrency, etc. Satan wants all of us to in, uh, live in a fantasy world of enjoying those things. We can't have Eden and its treasures in real life, so we escape to a virtual fantasy of our own little Eden that we play video games in. Yeah, that's good. Our own television where we fantasize ourselves, look at the beauty, look at the settings, look how pretty that digital screen is. Satan wants you to escape to electricity, electronics, so that you can avoid the reality of gold, silver, precious stones. Why does Hollywood always put up some of these fake gold, fake glitter in their gowns, in their dressing, uh, in their mansions? The, the, I mean, you get a Beverly Hills mansion, it's not going to be covered in pure gold. All they can do is imitate or go close as much as possible. And people are deceived. Christians are deceived. Listen up now. Christians are deceived by the devil and by today's elites and by today's world that our riches is here and now with these cheap kind of rags, these cheap little cars, nice, fancy, expensive cars that are cheap. Computer, internet, TV, the best thing that I'm going to get on Cyber Monday and Black Friday. And Satan wants you to waste your time trying to become a, a dumb, fake Hollywood star who can't own all the gold anyway. He has all these guys with Mark Zuckerberg and YouTube and all these guys, Twitter and all these guys, giving you a, your own fantasy to live up with, to waste your time in, while those elites spend their time gathering up all the gold that they can find, or anything close to gold that they can find. And all these elites, they can only get a bit of it. And the top elites, they hoard it, but that's not true gold. And Satan, all he can do is imitate it. But who's the true gold? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, no wonder that our video is lagging today. Yeah, Satan doesn't want you. Satan doesn't want you. Satan doesn't want you to see this teaching right here. Uh, why don't you put advertisements on YouTube so that you can get more money? I, I'm aiming for something higher, actually. <laughs> you know what I'm getting at, folks? Do you know what I'm getting at? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. Is that your foundation? Yes, sir. All right. Are you building on that foundation now? Are you wasting your time? Or are you throwing away that foundation for the cheap things of this world? Now, if any man build upon this foundation, what? Gold, gold silver, 
precious stones. But here are the weaker elements now, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So notice that your work contains either gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. And it's going to be cast into the fire. And the fire is going to try out that work and see if it can come out with gold or silver or precious stone, or it can burn up even higher with wood, hay, and stubble, because those elements burn. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. See that? Even if your work is poor, you're still saved. That's evidence of eternal security. Once saved, always saved, no matter what sin you commit. Yet so as by fire. You know what Satan wants you to do? He knows you got gold right now right. in your very own two hands. These are works for the Lord. And then God's going to say, okay, give me your work now, son. You toss it into the fire. And then these works that you thought meant nothing, that you thought was boring every Sunday, where you thought that you can spend better time with the internet or with computer games or with television or with your so-called friends, drinking, drugs, fornication, oh and etc. You thought those hands could be spent better time on those things. And what did they come out at the end? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, that's right. But these hands that you used to pass out tracts and to pray and to yeah. read the Bible and to straight preach and to tell somebody how to get saved through yeah, the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ, dragging yourself to go to church, God says, throw it in the fire, and it transforms into gold, silver, precious stones. So what is Satan's greatest deception to you people online and to you people in this church? Mm -hmm. Don't go to church, you're too tired. Yeah. Isn't it better to please your flesh here and now with the feeling of relief? Isn't that better? Isn't it better to uh, feel the sensation of entertain getting entertained by watching a screen? Uh, feeling the uh, joy of laughter with your so-called worldly friends, and etc. And, and uh, you know, getting green paper, cheap paper dollar bills, be a billionaire and a millionaire, better job, better money. Don't you want a better flat screen TV? Don't you want a better mansion? You know, you don't want to live in an apartment anymore. You want to live in a house, right? No, I don't! I want a mansion made out of pure gold, man. Yeah. That's what I want. You guys are cheap, man. <laughs> you think that Christianity is cheap, huh? No, you're cheap. You're cheap, friend. Oh, you're wasting your time. At, no, you're wasting your time, bud. I, I'm spending my time really well. I'm going to get this. But Satan's greatest deception was to get all of you suckers into his world system. The elite got you. Technology got you. The Vatican got you, Satan got you, the powers of hell and of this world got you. Because they want the gold. Satan will not get greater joy than for you not to get the gold. Because basically his glory and gold was cast off of him. And now God says, you're getting this gold and jewels that used to be Lucifer's. What do you think Satan will feel after that? Because he can never get it again. But you get it. You get it. My theory, theory, okay, not doctrine, but my theory is this. When Satan fell, all that gold and jewelry and his splendid of his kingdom at the Garden of Eden all came off. And then God says, I'm going to give it to a weaker race, a weaker beings who will give better glory to me and who will not develop pride. By me if I make them weak, they must not develop pride. Boy, aren't we wrong, right? <laughs> you bunch of stupid, idiotic, weak human beings that have so much pride in you. Because why? Your daddy's the devil. He wants you to follow him, the king of all the children of pride. I'm preaching right here. I'm enjoying on, myself. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> you see? You see? <laughs> Amen. Well, the thing is right here, you see, uh, why am I harping right here? Because this is the uh, most important thing 
that you probably heard. Out of all my deep uh, end times and demons teaching, this is probably the best one out of all, is that what are you wasting your life on? What are you spending your time on? It's all cast out of Satan and now throw it now in your hands what to do with it. Because Satan can never get that. All he can do is imitate it. All that can give him joy right now is that you don't get it just like him. That's the only thing that can give him joy, is that you suffer the loss of gold, silver, precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ, that experience of loss, like how he felt when he fell from heaven. He wants you to feel that experience. You guys think that the judgment seat of Christ is not a big deal, huh? Oh, yeah, I'll just go through it. Shame, tell the Lord, and stuff like that. No, that's more than a billion dollars to the devil. He wants you to experience what he felt when he rebelled and fell from the Lord. What it's like to lose gold, silver, and precious stones. Because for 1,000 years at the millennium, you will experience the loss of gold, silver, precious stones like Satan for 1,000 years, who's locked up in the bottomless pit. All right, let's stop here before I go up all night. Okay. All right.